Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. My name is Antoine de Fournay, and today we'll present a joint work with Peter Vikmirovic about bringing higher order automations to TLAPS. So let's start with some context. Um, I want to make clear that I will not talk about TLC and models in this talk. I will only be concerned with TLAPS and proofs. And also I will ignore uh, temporal problems because they are not so much used in practice for TLAPS. The problem I'm concerned with is a class of uh, theorems for TLAPS which are not handled very well currently uh, by the backend solvers because they are more second order problems which cannot be handled by first order backends. So I want to extend TLAPS with a new higher order backend solver and for this I chose zipper position. So let me explain quickly how TLAPS works for uh, those of you who never use TLAPS. Um, so the tool is able to parse a module for theorems and proof scripts and from these uh, proofs generate a number of proof obligations which correspond to proof steps in the script. Each proof obligation is then sent to a backend solver to all of the backend solvers of TLAPS after being encoded in the respective input languages. And whenever a solver uh, answers that a proof obligation is valid, it is trusted by TLAPS and the proof obligation is cons considered valid. So there are several backends available, Isabelle, Zenon, uh, a few SMT solvers, and PTL for the temporal uh, reasoning part. So to illustrate my problem, let's start from, um, from a, a definition. So I want to define a sum operator in TLA plus, and I want to do it by recursion. Uh, so in this expression, there are two parameters. There is the natural number n and the series s. For n, I can just represent it using a natural number of TLA plus, but for s, I have a choice. I can use a TLA plus function or an operator. So I chose op an operator for this, uh, for the sake of illustration, because that will make the sum operator parameterized by another operator, so it will be second order. Here is the definition. There is a difficulty with this definition because TLA plus doesn't allow to define recursive operators, only recursive functions. So this is why I have to do it in, uh, in two steps like this. Now, um, another issue with this definition is that when a definition a recursive function is defined like this, it's actually a choose expression behind the scenes. So some rec must be read as some function f, well, some f, sorry, such that f is a function on that that matches the recursive definition, if it exists. If such function doesn't exist, uh, then the definition can't be used so, so the user must have must prove by itself that such a function exists before the definition can be used for anything. Fortunately, uh, the standard distribution of TLAPS provides a module to um, to do just that. And if we follow a simple pattern of theorems, we can recover the basic facts and the basic properties of uh, the sum. Uh, quickly. So it works like this. First I have to prove uh, the theorem subdef conclusion, which I won't explain, but it states uh, in some way that the function f that matches the recursive definition does exist. And uh, you see here that the theorem has to be parameterized by an operator s. This is the assume new s part. I'm skipping the proof, but just know that uh, this is solved by TLAPS without problem. 
Now, the theorem I'm interested in is, is sum def. Sum def states that uh, the sum operator for uh, argument n and s uh, is defined by the recursive definition that I intended. So this is a statement that I would like to use instead of the actual definition of the operator uh, whenever I need to, have the, to use the sum definition. In principle, sum def is just a reformulation of sum def conclusion. So its proof is just one line here and it's, um, it works by invoking sum def conclusion as a lemma and expand some definition. Now, unfortunately, this proof fails. TLPS is not able to, to uh, prove this one. To understand why, let's look at some def conclusion. So, I already pointed out that some def conclusion is parameterized by an operator S. In logical terms, that means some def conclusion is a statement that is quantified over operators over an operator S. And for some def, this uh, quantified lemma has to be instantiated with an operator S. So we can see that it's not first, first order instantiation here, it's second order instantiation. And well, most of the backend solvers of TLAPS are only able to handle first order instantiation because they are first order um, logic and Isabel is the only backend that can do that so that makes the proof very fragile and because Isabel is not able to prove this one TLPS cannot do anything more and the proof fails okay so we can state in in general um, what problems are not going to uh, be handled well by TLAPS. Every time a lemma that is parameterized by an operator is invoked in a proof and that lemma has to be in, has to be used so to be instantiated with an operator, this is a second order problem. So we can't use the backend, the first order backend at all for, for those. As a special case, we can see constructs, primitive constructs like uh, set comprehension, for example, but also choose expression functions and so on, has second order uh, constructs with not axioms, but axiom schemas parameterized by, by an operator, predicate P in that case, and those axiom schema needs to be instantiated for the for the encoding. So of course these are common constructs. So for the first order encodings we have to handle them in some way. And currently this is done by eliminate, eliminating those um, problematic constructs. So here you can see one example uh, just to just to give the idea. So if I want to eliminate the set comprehension for this oops uh, for this predicate I can start by rewriting it as a second order application. So with one argument being the base set, but the other one being a predicate, the predicate uh, P. And then uh, what I need to do is to replace this application by another application with a new declared operator, uh, which is specialized for this predicate. And I also need to uh, provide the axiom, the instance of the axiom schema for set comprehension for that predicate, and that's it. There are complications when uh, some local variables are involved. See in that example, uh, we need to make some arrangement, provide C as a parameter, but this is something that we are able to do in cases uh, such as this one because we know the axiom schema behind the construct. Now, if I don't want to do this uh, rather technical elimination procedure, I can just um, 
encode the problem into higher order logic and send the higher order problem to a solver which is able to under higher order logic. Um, we chose the position to, to make this experiment. Uh, the position is a first order a superposition solver which was extended to higher order logic recently. Uh, to give you more context, this is part of a project called Matryoshka and uh, supervised by uh, Jasmine Blanchette, uh, which is about extending solver from first order to higher order logic in a way that preserves their good properties. And the position um, uh, just won the cask competition last year in the THF division. THF is a component of the TPTP standard uh, language for problems and uh, it covers higher order logic. So we did um, uh, the implementation. Um, we implemented it at the module, so an export from TLA plus to THF. The important aspect of this is that we don't need to eliminate the higher order features anymore. So we can translate the uh, problem more Direct, directly than before, and using this, uh, using the position, we were able to solve the sum example um, rather easily. Now there are still some there are still some work to do. Um, so our pri priority right now is to make the this new the proposition backend um, as efficient as the first order backends of TLAPS. So the first order of encodings are um, well optimized uh, by now, especially the SMT encoding. So we could test this one uh, some example, but to evaluate it on a larger base of examples, we still have work to do. The next step would be to mix higher order reasoning with theories, especially arithmetic, um, here is the problem is that zipper position is extended to higher order logic, but this extension is not compatible with special reasoning uh, like arithmetic. So we cannot use the backend for obligation that mix uh, higher order with arithmetic, for example. So we need to find a solution for that yet. And then the, the next step, uh, maybe more long uh, term objective, would be to attempt an encoding um, based on the sets as predicates principle. Um, the idea for this encoding is that we can encode sets as predicates which are satisfied by the elements of that set and those elements only and set membership is encoded as a um, functional application in higher order logic, very simply. So here you can find some, some examples, very easy to understand how this works. And the interest of that encoding will be um, that we don't need to declare many new operators and axioms in the resulting file because each set uh, can just be represented by a lambda term and, and that is all. Okay, so this is the end of the talk. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, I'm ready to answer them now.